Censored beeps in this video are classified names or locations that are withheld from public hearing and are therefore edited for legal reasons from the SCP Agency. In association with the SCP website, secure, contain, protect. This video contains disturbing content, violent content, scary content, flashing lights and sudden loud noises. Viewer discretion advised. The SCP Foundation is an organization of numerous doctors, researchers, and agents aiming to understand and catalog anomalous objects and keep them from getting into the wrong hands. SCP objects are classified into three main categories of safety. Safe, or understood objects which can be left alone with no major consequences. Euclid, for not well understood objects which may cause containment breaches if not actively watched. And Keter, for dangerous objects that will break containment and do harm unless they are surveyed 24-7 and may cause an end of the world scenario. SCP-1351 Object Class Euclid SCP-1351 is a cave located within the Mammoth Cave National Park in Kentucky. Interestingly enough, this cave in no way follows the rules of gravity, space, nor time, as the warp tunnel beneath the sanctuary of the Earth's surface wraps around itself to form its own gravitational point. Basically, the floor begins to twist, and the one rock wall twists alongside it, reassuming positions parallel to its original location. It's been reported that the gravity within the cave depends on the situation and angle of the floor. The cave enters with a hole in the ceiling, which is unusual in comparison to the majority of the caves in the National Park. However, the temporal animalities within the cave itself has gained the most attention, as no one can give logical reason to explain why they happen, or how they happen. A standard perimeter fence and signs warning away unauthorized personnel, and the access road to the entrance of SCP-1351 is marked Authorized Vehicles Only, to match nearby park roads which are not open to the general public. The permanent security team are the United States National Park Rangers and civilian speleologists. SCP-1351 was most recently discovered in 1995 by National Park Service speleologists mapping the cavern to determine if it connected to the main cave system in the park. Three expedition teams surveyed the interior between 1995 and 2002 determining the cavern to be sufficiently safe for a permanent research presence. Research operations are still ongoing. SCP-049 Object Class Euclid SCP-049 is another humanoid character who, in addition to his mask, wears a black hooded robe, replicating that of which worn by plague doctors in 16th century Europe. Further studies reveal that his clothing is actually a part of SCP-049's physical figure, and although it feels like leather, it is actually the same material as its muscle tissue. 049's touch is invariably lethal to humans, causing the victim to suffer and then die, the plague doctor will dissect the body, injecting certain chemicals into the victim. After a period of a few minutes, the victim will resume vital signs and appear to reanimate. However, it seems completely without higher brain functions and will wander aimlessly until it encounters another living human. At that point, the adrenaline and endorphin levels increase to approximately 300% as it will attempt to kill 
any human beings it can find before returning to its mindless state and wandering until it comes across more humans. Detailed autopsies of 049's victims have found several unusual substances within the body, including and in the sternum region. However, several have yet to be identified and remain classified. The behavior of SCP-049 is unpredictable and although it doesn't seem too menacing, the physical appearance is far from inviting. SCP-049 is held in a research sector heavily guarded and monitored at all times. It's been noted the SCP is capable of speech, as noted in one of the interviews held by Dr. Now playing audio log 2957. What is this place? What? It's a laboratory. A laboratory? It is quite marvelous. I now find it no wonder I've seen so few victims of the disease in here. Yeah. You see, I thought you incapable of speech. I'm somewhat startled you, uh, can. Oh my yes, good sir, I simply prefer not to. Most victims of the disease are quite melancholy, and I do not react at all well to conversation. I've seen you several times now, and have not detected the disease in you. Therefore, I assume you are also a doctor. Yes, actually. Call me But what disease are you talking about? Why, good doctor, the Great Pestilence. What else? Great Pestle? Oh, the plague. Yeah, I should have seen that coming. But no one here is infected, I can assure you. Oh, good doctor, I can assure you the pestilence is here. And I can sense it. It is my duty in life to read the world of it. My cure is the most effective. Your cure? Your cure has cost hundreds of lives. Your cure is faulty. Good doctor. My cure is most effective. Explain how it is effective. Answer me! Dr. S*** acknowledges authorized personnel to report to Lab 15A immediately. This interview is over. Subject refuses to speak and will now be placed back into containment. End of recording. SCP-1382 Object Class Euclid SCP-1382 is a Red Sea Mark water buoy floating on the surface of Lake Michigan. All air and sea traffic must be redirected away from containment site. Although SCP-1382 has taken a fair amount of structural damage during its lifetime, it still stands tall. Occasionally flashing out the SOS distress signal in Morse code in 10 second intervals. This mysterious buoy is anchored to a downed airliner lying deep beneath the surface of the water named Flight 441. This derelict aircraft contains the skeletal remains of 56 passengers and crew members who begin to animate, obtaining their natural body temperature of 37.0 degrees Celsius as registered by thermal imaging scanners and assume into the crash position in their seats. After 13 seconds of activity, all instances of passengers turn to face SCP-1382. They remain in this position until SCP-1382 ceases its SOS, at which point they collapse and become inert. It has been reported that the passengers are distressed due to the accounts before the crash as opposed to the crash itself, implying that every passenger is stuck in some kind of time loop. SCP-002 Object Class Euclid SCP-002 resembles a tumorous, fleshy growth 
with a volume of roughly 60 centimeter cubed. An iron valve hatch on one side leads to its interior, which appears to be a standard low-rent apartment of modest size. The interior of the fleshy sphere is decorated like a low-cost rented apartment with furniture made up from biological matter such as bone, hair, and more, all of which are from the human body. In addition to this, there is also a window to be found on the interior, though no such breach can be seen when trying to view from the exterior. All matter tested thus far show independent or fragmented DNA sequences from each object inside of the room. There have been seven cases of Foundation personnel disappearing after entering this SCP for examination, and roughly at the same time, new furniture could be found inside of the room, consisting of a lamp and some rugs. The furniture was, again, made up of the biological matter of the human body, presumably the biological matter of the seven personnel that mysteriously disappeared. As detailed in the archive under the Mulhausen report, SCP-002 was first discovered in a small crater in northern where it struck Earth from orbit in 1994. SCP-804 Object Class Keter SCP-804 is said to be the remnants of a sculpture found by a group of artists. Said sculpture consists of a model, transparent globe with a few smaller globes situated around it. Whilst the globes swivel on the axis that they were constructed on, any man-made material within a hundred meter radius, including the tissue of a human being, will gradually decay. When it comes to inanimate objects, such as clothes, buildings, or anything else of the sort, the speed of decay is slightly accelerated. Biologically speaking, however, the corrosion of the body is a great deal slower and requires a long period of exposure to cause any permanent or noteworthy damage. This mainly consists of loss of body mass and leaving with symptoms of severe starvation but both of these aspects can be fixed with the correct amount of medical care. Exposed to whatever force this SCP admits for an extended period of time would cause the skeleton to collapse and inevitably lead to death. Tests have been carried out to see if the results obtained from the reaction with human matter would be the same as with animal matter, but to no avail. Because of the nature of SCP-804, it is not contained within any Foundation facility, believing the effects of the SCP could destroy its own containment and seriously compromise any other containment nearby. SCP-2998 Object Class Safe SCP-2998 is an anomalous radio signal picked up from all quarters of the solar system. It's not yet known where the origin of this signal is, or when it began its transmission, but the SCP Foundation made it a point to prevent all personal radios from detecting and listening to SCP-2998 until further research is conducted into the safety of the signal, as well as its origin. SCP-2998 is just a consistent electromagnetic signal which previews white noise at all times. No means have been found to decode the signal until 2011, when the signal was also found to contain a video transmission of a humanoid entity floating aimlessly in a dark room. No background information has thus far been obtained about what this message could possibly mean or why the message is being transmitted at all. But due to bodily gestures that the aforementioned humanoid was conducting, it can be presumed that whatever it was, it was in clear physical distress. It was initially theorized that the Foundation may be picking up signals from a television show, 
that this was considered highly unlikely due to the random and complex encoding of the transmission. We simply do not know. SCP-1875 Object Class Euclid SCP-1875 is a Victorian-era chess machine consisting of a steel chessboard table, a drive shaft, a stationary steam engine, and a suit of 18th century samurai armor. However, the machine itself is powered by a biological system that controls a matrix of 64 electromagnets using an engine created from the combined brain tissue of the twin daughters of a Russian chess prodigy. A complete set of 32 pieces carved in the oriental style from human bone with each piece affixed to a thin 0.31 centimeter base pad of ferromagnetic iron. Effectively, the whole thing runs on the souls of the two little girls. It is said that the souls will perform illegal moves during a game and make illogical turns whilst playing. SCP-1875 containment permit no use of data network devices and a child psychologist to be present. The Euclid ranking of this SCP seems very appropriate, considering the fact that we do not fully understand how it works, nor why it works, nor what works within it. Only the premise is understood at this point. SCP-823, Object Class Euclid. SCP-823 is an abandoned amusement park located in a It is responsible for the deaths of an unfathomably large amount of people, nicknamed Bloody Sunday, because of the 231 people dying in the theme park due to the accidents of staff members and customers alike. The majority of these deaths were horrifically violent. Some examples include a mascot found dead of suffocation, a group of people found decapitated on a roller coaster, a couple fused together on a ride, and a mutilated man found in the Hall of Mirrors. Foundation personnel are found surveying the area, and are instructed to avoid an area known as the Red Zone. The Red Zone is an area where no one can enter, not even by those of the highest authority. It isn't stated as to why the Red Zone cannot be accessed, but it does claim that anyone who attempts to enter will be terminated by sniper fire. Should music or piping be heard, emanating from within the red zone, Foundation personnel on site are immediately prepared to use protective earplugs and withdraw from their positions to a two kilometer period beyond the currently established yellow zone and inform Foundation scientific personnel immediately. SCP-1981 Object Class, Safe SCP-1981, or commonly referred to as Ronald Reagan cut up whilst talking, is a strange distorted videotape of Ronald Reagan making his evil empire speech. The tape itself is made from all the normal materials that you would expect to get from a Betamax tape. The tape was originally encountered by a filing clerk in the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in 1991, 11 years after this original speech was made. During the tape, Reagan's face seems to fall apart, cuts opening up on his face and eyes becoming bruised. The video continues until his vocal cords are severed. Occasionally, during the beginning of the tape, a figure clothed in black robes and a pointed hood appears in the background, which replaces another member of the press detail. SCP-1981 is kept inside of a secure video storage unit in the media archive of Site <laughs> Years of natural magnetic interference have severely degraded SCP-1981's signal quality, making it even more difficult to sift meaningful information from continued playbacks. SCP-1981 
SCP-342. Object Class, Euclid. SCP-342 normally takes the form of a mass transit ticket for the closest form of mass transportation to its current location. At the moment, it takes the form of a train ticket departing from <laughs> transit station. When held by a sentient person for any length of time, it will eventually change form into a transit ticket for a form of transportation that its holder desires to use. The transformation always takes place when not being directly or indirectly observed. No recordings of SCP-342 changing its form exist at this time. Anyone who uses SCP-342 to board a vehicle is unable to exit the vehicle by any means. When the vehicle reaches the end of its route, the one using the ticket will cease to exist in our reality. Any user of this SCP claims to feel extremely paranoid and have an uncomfortable and uncontrollable dread consume them. Specifically, the way in which they describe their emotions when in contact with the ticket resembles acute paranoid schizophrenia as all will witness a perception of darkness outside of their vehicle, including a mass amount of fog or the portrayal of night. Witness reports claim that victims mumble to themselves or grow an intense fear of other passengers and the conductor. There have been several experiments with different transportation networks, each yielding different results. SCP-610 Object Class Keto SCP-610 is a contagious virus that starts out with a small rash, which will then lead to intense itching and skin sensitivity. However, after three hours, the skin disease will spread in such a way that skin will begin to scar and cover in blemishes around the chest and arm region, completely consuming the affected person after a full five hours of being infected. Following this is the life functions ceasing for a full three minutes before starting again at a rate of two or three times the regular activity rate for a standard human being. This leads to the sprouting of several limbs, like a leg or an arm. The skin disease can affect one in such a way that the head will become so misshapen it will barely be recognizable as being a human. The victim will sit in one place and root itself to the surroundings that it is located in, consuming objects around it with his or her own flesh. The area that SCP-610 affects is close to Lake Baikal in southern Siberia, and it was first reported from the Russian government through undisclosable channels. The reports consisted primarily of disappearances of farmers in the region, and were not considered until local police and government agents failed to report within a 72-hour period. Observation of SCP-610 infected settlements have been established using artificial methods such as remote robots and drones. The data returned from these observations, coupled with the openly aggressive nature of the infected to attempt to spread SCP-610, has resulted in the Keter classification However, so long as nothing is allowed to enter or leave the infected areas, it is considered to be a neutralized threat. SCP-122 Object Class, Keter As strange as it may sound, SCP-122 is a child's nightlight designed to look like a star. This product is unregistered and has no brand name written anywhere on the structure, so it's safe to presume that this nightlight is but an anomaly of its kind. Reports indicate that when it is in an unpowered state, the nightlight will affect anyone within a 500 meter radius of its location. 
when anyone enters the radius, they will slip into an REM sleep and will be sent into a comatose state until the night light has recharged itself. While comatose, subjects will claim that they have seen humanoid figures that are formed from a black, translucent mass of shadow from somewhere around the light. Figures have been described as sentient, with physical properties similar to that of the subject. In a powered state, the sleep pattern of the subject will be affected greatly. Claims have been made that the subjects will have disturbing and psychologically tormenting dreams that have often led to insomnia. SCP-122 was first discovered within the Linnell Children's Hospital on the <laughs> after several reports of its manifestations reached locally embedded agents. Recovered documents indicate that a patient brought SCP-122 when being admitted. However, no record of the patient's identity has been found. SCP-122 is stored in a standard containment chamber containing a single electrical outlet. Personnel are instructed to routinely monitor SCP-122 at all times and never let it enter an unpowered state. During a breach which caused the death of 17 site personnel, security footage witnessed several maintenance personnel tampering with the SCP-122's chamber lock. When questioned, the subjects claimed that they had done so under duress, saying that a canary was not allowing them to sleep until they released SCP-122. Affected subjects were given Class A amnesthetics, and containment procedures have been revised. SCP-513 Object Class Euclid SCP-513 is a simple bell coated in a thick layer of rust. All attempts to remove the rust that engulfs the integrity of the bell have been unsuccessful. Having tested using both chemical measures and mechanical, there are literally no markings or symbols to be seen, so it is impossible to identify the exact origin. Upon SCP-513's discovery, it was also found that the bell's clapper was strapped tightly to one of the interior walls of the thick metal structure using strong industrial tape. Attached to the bell was a piece of paper with the text written on it which read, You've seen it, now he can hear you. You've touched it, now he can see you. Never ring it. If you hear it, he can touch you. Any sentient being to hear the bell chime shows overt signs of extreme anxiety with an increased heart rate and blood pressure. After some time, those exposed to the sound claim to catch glimpses of another humanoid sentient being in their peripheral vision. Whenever the exposure victim attempts to look directly at this other being, it simply runs in the other direction, not leaving any traces. Due to the severity of the anxiety caused by the knowledge of this stalking, victims are commonly deprived of sleep and often suffer from clinical depression. Those who were able to fall unconscious state that they are physically assaulted by the stalking being, which flees when the victim awakes. All description taken from several different Foundation personnel all match the same criteria. A humanoid being with long arms and large hands. This being is not visible to those who have been exposed to the ringing of the bell which leaves researchers blindsided. SCP-513 is located in a one cubic meter block of gelatin and contained within a soundproofed, climate-controlled cell, which is inspected daily for any degradation or loss of integrity. SCP-03 5. Object Class Keter. SCP-035 is a white ceramic comedy mask that will often change its appearance to its binary opposite. This change will also cause its appearance to change in any video footage, photograph, or even artistic depictions 
created prior to said change to match its new physical appearance. It's been stated that a vicious liquid will constantly leak from its orifices, which has been proven to be corrosive to any material that may come in contact with it, aside from the mask itself. The name of the liquid is unknown and is anomalous in its appearance, being only visible from the front and showing no signs of existence when looking from the back of the mask. A true fear factor to consider would be the fact that any person to come within two meters of the mask will have a strange compulsion to put the mask on. After doing so, the individual will have a different waveform sent through their brain, causing them to become brain dead. However, the consciousness of SCP-035 is still very much present and will continue to possess and control the actions that the victim makes. In addition to this, SCP-035 has been shown to be very manipulative, being able to corrupt and cause sudden fluctuations to the psychological mindset of any other person within a certain distance of the mask. Subjects have been quoted to say that it has an intimate knowledge of how the human brain works and would be able to change the views of any individual if given enough time. SCP-035 has been found to be able to possess anything that has a humanoid shape, including mannequins, corpses, and even statues. The subject has been able to motivate all into movement, removing the need to expose live subjects. Personnel within 10 meters of SCP-035 have recently reported feeling unease, stating that they can hear unintelligible whispering. Several others have suffered from severe migraines. The object has been monitored, but there is no change in its dormant behavior, and no sounds have been recorded. SCP-035 is kept within a hermetically sealed glass case, no fewer than four inches thick. This case is to be contained within a steel, iron, and lead shielded room at all times. Doors are to be triple locked at all times, with the exception of allowing personnel in or out. Guards remain outside at all times and are not allowed within the containment room under any circumstances. SCP-439 Object Class Euclid. SCP-439 is an insect of unknown origin that uses the human body as a habitat for its colony. The process begins by the queen entering the body via the mouth when the subject is asleep. The insect will crawl down the trachea, creating a nest within the lungs. A few hours after awakening, subjects will complain of an ever-increasing tightness of the chest, followed by a consistent, sharp pain located in the abdomen. Soon after, the victim will begin to suffer from rabid fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva, a disease which turns muscle tissue into bone. The sheer spread of this procedure causes some bone matter to breach through the skin and become exposed, causing a great deal of pain to the subject at hand. In a matter of three days, the subject's skeletal structure will have distorted and stretched in such a way that their body is no longer recognizable as human, taking the shape of a circle and anchoring itself to its current location and feeding off the organs within the body. Prior to this, the victim will have felt the strong compulsion to seek shelter of some sort in a small, enclosed space. The host, now in its new territory, creates a hive of insects consisting of warriors, workers, and drones within this new skeletal cage. In a particularly disturbing development, Dr. Anderson performed a range of experiments to determine the extent of damage to the host body after it has finished the transformation into a hive. While it was previously discovered in autopsy that portions of the brain are hollowed out to serve as food, others are left intact, presumably to regulate what bodily functions continue. While the eyes are eventually reached and used as a food source, opening the eyelids and examining them with a flashlight discovered that the host's eyes followed the beam. 
experimentation was ceased and no further testing was scheduled. SCP-895 Object Class Euclid SCP-895 is an oak wood coffin which was recovered by the SCP team when there were reports of strange footage within the surveillance tapes regarding this particular object. SCP-895 is stored in an isolated underground containment cell at a depth of approximately 100 meters. This SCP is reported to cause disturbance to photography or video equipment within a range of 50 meters. These disturbances include vivid hallucinations and graphic images. The strangest factor of this is that those physically in the presence of SCP-895 will not experience any of these hallucinations. It's also stated that obtained footage within a range of 5 meters of the SCP will cause severe psychological trauma and hysteria from the subject. Again, even if footage is obtained from 5 meters away from the subject, those who are physically present with the SCP will not experience any kind of the trauma. And in previous operations, mobile units have even made physical contact with the coffin, and apparently, unexplained paranormal activity has been reported if the lid is removed. An audio excerpt was recovered off of site. Now playing. Audio excerpt from the SCP-895 recovery log. Team 1, command. All civilians have been detained and evacuated. You are clear to move in and capture. Command 1, lead. Roger, we are moving in. We are inside the lobby. Video, be check. Team 1, command. We're seeing blood on the walls. Please confirm. Negative command. It's clean in here. Nothing out of the ordinary. It's gone. Team 1. Advise possible momentic properties in effect. We are in the storage area. Object located. Christ. It's moving. Team 1. Confirm. Object appears to be alive and moving. Command negative, we see no movement. Two, open it up! Command one, lead. The object appears to be empty. Command, do you copy? Command, do you copy? Fucking out! Close that thing! Now! End of recording. Alright, looking at the second security monitor of the SCP-895 maintenance tunnel. Now, the personnel here have witnessed this paranormal occurrence over the past few days now. It's not as devastating as the activity that was first witnessed when we found it. Maybe it's getting progressively weaker? We aren't sure. Anyway, if you see right here, at the four minute mark, the camera feed starts getting more interference, okay? Normally, this is usual, but see right here. You see this outline of some sort of figure looming over the camera? We're not sure what that is, but all right, there's this one over here. At the far back wall, this four-legged creature emerges, gets near the camera, and vanishes. Can't really pinpoint what these are. Maybe they are spirits of SCP-895? We are not sure. SCP-372 Object Class Euclid SCP-372, or more commonly referred to as the Peripheral Jumper, is an abnormally flexible green creature able to flex each part of its body. The muscle tissue of the peripheral jumper allows for rapid and accurate movements, and using this ability lurks just out of range of human peripheral vision, hence its name. In events of a containment breach, 
All personnel are told to watch for a green flicker in the corner of their eyes, as this is an evident sign of SCP-372's presence. Even more interesting, or rather terrifying, is its sensory organ. It allows for echolocation and identification of energy transfer. Instead of vision-sensitive eyes, there's no hiding from this sentient blur. Any thermal energy a person emits will be taken note of. SCP-372 is contained in a cell, 5 meters by 4 meters by 2 meters, lined with reinforced plexiglass. Embedded into each of the four walls of the cell are infrared motion detectors. SCP-1048 Object Class Keter SCP-1048 is a small teddy bear, approximately 33 centimeters in height. Through testing, composition of the subject revealed no unusual qualities that made it discernible from a non-sapient teddy bear. Subject is capable of moving of its own accord and can communicate through a small range of gestures. The subject regularly shows affection to individuals in ways found in being by most people. Affection is usually given in the form of a hug to the lower leg, but subject has also been observed dancing, jumping in place, and in two separate events, has even drawn childlike pictures for janitorial staff. However, seven months after its first capture, random occurrences concluded that SCP-1048 could actually create non-identical duplicates of itself. Dr. Carver has suggested that SCP-1048 uses its endearing qualities to lull those around it into a false sense of security, allowing it to collect materials to produce these creations. The first incident mainly consisted of the discovery of SCP-1048 giving a tour to an almost identical copy of itself, although the material of the duplicate was fully formed with human ears. When staff attempted to recapture the two objects, the duplicate let out an ear-splitting, high-pitched cry which caused severe pain in the eyes and ears of all Foundation personnel within a five-meter distance. Every person afflicted with this symptom died within three minutes. This resulted in the death of seven personnel, including the entire security team. Autopsies revealed the cause of death to be asphyxiation caused by an abundance of ear-like growths manifesting in the mouth and esophagi of all victims. The whereabouts of SCP-1048 and its clones are currently unknown, though are still believed to be somewhere in Site-24. SCP-096 Object Class Euclid SCP-096 measures roughly two and a half meters in height, with barely any muscle mass or body hair. Its limbs are completely out of proportion to its body, each arm measuring at a length of 1.5 meters. The activity of SCP-096 is far from normal, spending most of its days pacing the eastern wall of its cell. The only real issue reveals itself when somebody sees its face. From this point onwards, SCP-096 will become severely emotionally distressed, covering its face with its sickly, twisted arms whilst crying, screaming, and even babbling. It will then take it upon itself to seek out whomever was to view its face, attempting to charge towards them at speeds of 35 kilometers per hour and even higher, though the speed typically depends on the distance between the viewer and the SCP. Scarily enough, the location of the viewer does not seem to change the behavior of SCP-096, as it will have a constant, yet logically impossible sense of where the victim is at all times. Whenever 096 actually reaches the person, it will proceed to kill them and somehow leave no traces of the victim's biological matter. 
SCP-096 is contained in an airtight steel cube at all times. Weekly checks for any cracks or holes are mandatory. Because of the nature of the SCP, only two cloaked video surveillance tools are used inside its cell. For safer research and security, personnel use pre-installed pressure sensors and laser detectors to ensure its presence inside the cell. AU audio log was recovered from an interview between Dr. and Captain detailing Zulu-9's first incident with SCP-096. Now playing AU audio log 1557. It always sucks ass to get the initial retrieval duty. You have no idea what the damn thing is capable of besides what jacked up information the field techies can scrape up. And you're lucky if they even tell you the whole story. They told us to bag and tag. Didn't tell us jack shit about not looking at the damn thing. Could you describe your mission please? We had two choppers, one with my team and one on backup with Zulu 9B and Dr. We spotted the target about two clicks north of our patrol path. I'm guessing he wasn't facing our direction, else he would have taken us out then and there. Your report says SCP-096 didn't react to the cold. It was minus C. Actually, it was negative Anyway, we landed, approached the target, and Corporal got ready to bag it. That's when Doctor called. I turned to answer it, and that's what saved me. The target must have turned, and my whole squad saw it. That's when SCP-096 entered an agitated emotional state? Yeah, well, I never saw its face. My squad did, and they paid for it. Could you describe it a little more, please? Yeah. It started screaming at us and crying. Not animal roaring, sounded exactly like a person. Really creepy. We started firing and it picked up Corporal and ripped off his leg. We were blowing chunks out of the target round after round. Didn't do jack shit. And that's when you ordered the use of an um, 84 HEDT launcher? An anti-tank gun. Started carrying it ever since we had some of the SCPS get loose. I've seen those tear through tanks like tissue. There was significant damage to SCP-096? It didn't even flinch. It kept tearing apart my squad, but with half of its torso gone. But it was taking damage. If it was, it wasn't showing it. It must have lost all its organs, all of its blood, but it didn't acknowledge any of it. Its bone structure wasn't hurt at all. So, no actual structural damage. How many rounds would you say were fired at SCP-096? At the least, a thousand. Our door gunner kept his GA-19 on it for at least 20 seconds. 20 fucking seconds. That's 650 caliber rounds pumped into that thing. Might as well have been spitting at it. And this is when Zulu-9B arrived? Zulu-9B managed to get a bag over its head and it just sat down. We got it into the chopper and got it here. We have obtained an artist's depiction of SCP-096's face. Would you like to view it? You know, after hearing that thing screams, and the screams of my men, I don't think I want to put a face on what I heard. Alright, well, I believe we're done here. Thank you, Captain. Is confirmed to have left interview room 22, subject slightly distressed. I hereby request SCP 096 be terminated as soon as possible. This is Dr. Audio Log, date January 5th, 1992. End of recording. SCP 173 Object Class Euclid Probably one of the most popular SCP monsters, SCP-173 is a humanoid statue made from concrete and other rock material, with discoloration in the face region. As innocent as the object class makes this monster sound, the capabilities of the statue are unfathomable. Looking away for a split second even when blinking will mean that this statue is free to move. 
When chamber inspections or maintenance takes place, no less than three members of staff can be in the room and must alert one another before blinking to reduce the risk of having their necks broken. SCP-173 cannot move when direct eye contact is made, meaning that if a constant line of sight is made with this statue, it can't move. Recent reports indicated scraping sounds of stone, originating from inside the container when no one is present inside or no cameras are monitoring it. It's considered normal, but was indicated to be a warning if the behavior had changed. The brown substance on the floors of the room seemed to be a combination of feces and blood, and is usually noticed several days into the week. Origin of these materials is unknown, but the enclosure must be cleaned on a bi-weekly basis. SCP-106 Object Class Keter SCP-106 appears to be an elderly humanoid figure, heavily decomposed. One of the creepiest aspects of this SCP is that its behavior is completely unpredictable and can remain motionless for days before attacking. Any material that comes in contact with SCP-106 will proceed to corrode due to the mucous matter that covers this monster's body. It is proven that this SCP can actually walk through solid matter, such as walls, and is believed to travel into its pocket dimension that it uses as a lair for prey. As for attacking, it assaults major organs and arteries to completely disable the victims before transporting them to the pocket dimension. SCP-106 is to be contained in a sealed container comprised of lead-lined steel. The container will be sealed within 40 layers of identical material, each layer separated by no less than 36 centimeters of empty space. SCP-106 appears to go through long periods of dormancy, in which it will remain completely motionless for up to three months. The cause for this is unknown. However, it has been known that this appears to be used as a lulling tactic. SCP-106 will emerge from this state in a very agitated emotion and will attack and abduct staff and cause gross damage to its containment cell and the site at large. SCP-106 appears to hunt and attack based on desire and not hunger. SCP-106 will attack and collect multiple prey items during a hunting behavior event, keeping many alive in the pocket dimension for extended periods of time. SCP-106 has no terminal limit and appears to collect a random number of prey items during an event. SCP-087 Object Class Euclid SCP-087 is an unlit platform staircase. Stairs descend on a 38 degree angle for 13 steps before reaching a semi-circular platform of approximately 3 meters in diameter. The design of SCP-087 limits subjects to a visual range of approximately 1.5 flights. A light source is required for any subjects exploring SCP-087 as there are no lighting fixtures or windows present. Lighting sources brighter than 75 watts have shown to be ineffective, as SCP-087 seems to absorb excess light. The depth of descent calculated from Exploration 4 is shown to be far beyond both the possible structure of both the building and geological surroundings. At this time, it is unknown if SCP-087 is an endpoint. Within this chamber of stairs, the sound of a pleading child can be heard, but the source cannot be found. Even descending further down the flight of the stairs will not increase the volume of the crime. All SCP personnel who conducted a search within SCP-087 encountered another figure identified as SCP-0871. Video recorded explorations witnessed a pale face with no pupils, nostrils, or a visible mouth. Although it has been determined that SCP-0871 is not the source of the aforementioned crime, those faces with SCP-0871 
suffer from extreme paranoia and nausea. And in some cases, personnel have fallen unconscious in their blind panic and are never rescued. The nature of SCP-0871 is entirely unclear, but it has been determined that it is not the source of the pleading either. It was reported two weeks following Exploration 4, several members of the campus reported knocking at a variable rate of 1 to 2 seconds, coming from the interior of SCP-087. Ever since, heavy maintenance was performed on the door leading to SCP-087. All the reported knockings have ceased.